So hello, my name is Alejandro with GSC, and today we're going to take a look at how to link your custom property information in your model or drawing file to your title block. So a lot of time users, um, when creating their drawing documents, they have to fill uh, their title block manually. Now, if you have multiple sheets, this can become a very cumbersome process. Uh, instead, instead, you can fill out your custom property information in your model or drawing and then have that information be automatically propagated to your title block. And that's what we're going to learn how to do today. So here I have an assembly of a rapid water level control, as you can see. In my model, I have already some pre-filled uh, file properties, such as the number, the description, uh, the model revision, the weight, the vendor, as well as the vendor number. Let's go ahead and make a drawing for this assembly. So I'll go ahead and make a drawing from assembly. Here I have my various training templates. I've already, I'm going to use the one called Micromax C size. And when my template comes in, I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop a front view. And if I look at my title block, you can see that currently there is no information being filled in. Uh, the little X's that you see there uh, with the box around it, uh, those are just note placeholders. Essentially, I inserted a note into... Uh, into the title block without actually adding any text. Now in my drawing document itself, I also have some file properties such as drawn by, checked by, revision. Um, looks here like I got some duplicates, so let's go ahead and delete these. And I, that information I also want to propagate into my title block. So the way I'm going to do this is first I'm going to go to right click and click edit sheet format. And this will give me access to the title block fields. And here you can see I have note placeholders. And like I said before, these are just notes that don't have any text in them. So I can delete this, hit note, drop it. I'll expand this a little bit. I'm going to change the size, maybe to like 10. And you can see that all I have there is essentially a note placeholder. So next, we're going to have to link our notes placeholders to our custom properties in our model and in our drawing document. So the way I do this, I'm going to double click the note placeholder. We'll start with description. And on the left side in uh, the property manager, there is this command called link to property. And this is going to allow me to propagate or bring in anything that's in my model or in my custom properties for my model or for my drawing and have it uh, fill my title block. So I'll click it. Here you have two options. Uh, do you want to grab custom properties from the current document, which is our drawing document, or do we want to bring in custom properties from our 3D model? Uh, in this case, the description custom properties in the model. Here you have two options. Uh, the first one is drawing view specified in the sheet properties, and the second one is selected component or other drawing view. Essentially, if you pick uh, drawing view specified by sheet properties, whatever the first uh drawing view that you drop into your drawing, that's going to be the model that the custom properties are going to be uh, linked or brought in from. So here I'll go to property name and I'll go ahead and select description. So here property pretty much lists all the custom properties that are available that you can link to your title block uh, note placeholder. 
And just like that, you can see that our description that was in our model was automatically brought in. If I go back to my model really fast and go to the custom properties, you can see that that description, custom property matches the one that's in our title block now. And we're going to repeat this process for all of our other notes. So next we'll do vendor number. Once again, the vendor number, that's, all, that's also found in the model. And if I hit the proper name pull down, I should have access to it. So vendor number, you can see that automatically fills in. For vendor also found in the model. So I'll go ahead and select vendor. In this case, it's GSC. Weight is also a property that's gonna be brought in from the model. So model found here. And we'll select weight. Part number is also another one that's found in the model. And that would be number. So those are all the properties that uh, are being brought in from the model. Next, we're going to link the custom properties. Uh, they're going to be brought in uh, from our drawing sheet. So we'll go ahead and click the drawn by placeholder. And this time, Instead of going model found here, since this custom property is found uh, in the drawing file itself, we're going to pick current document. And you'll see here that I'll have access to the drawn by custom property. And right now in our drawing, there is no information filled in. That's why you don't see anything being propagated over. If I was to actually go into my drawings custom properties and filled in information such as AM you'll see that that information would get brought in next we have checked by if you ever see that the little box doesn't appear uh, just double click in the area and eventually you'll show up and that's also found in the drawing itself so we'll use current document and this will be checked by. There's no information in there. So um, it will get automatically filled in once we actually fill out the custom property information in the drawing itself, as you can see there. It looks like I had two overlaid on top of each other. So sometimes be careful, you'll have duplicate notes and you won't notice. Uh, in that case, I had to delete it. Next, what about scale? What if I want to show the sheet scale? This information can get brought in directly from the drawing itself as well. Um, scale does not show up as a custom property. Um, all you have to do is simply double click it hit link to property for the current document and you'll see that under where you'll have a SOLIDWORKS uh, custom property called um, sheet scale okay if you if you click that it will automatically bring in whatever your global sheet scale is so if I change this to let's say one to one you see I'll update. I'll change this back to let's just say 1 to 10. Next, since I have multiple sheets, as you can see here, I want the sheet number to automatically propagate. And this can also be 
uh, linked using custom property information. So I'll double click this note. On the left side, I'll go to current document and I'm going to link the custom property called, let's see what we have here. We have We have total sheets, which is not what we want. We want the current sheet. In this case, it's sheet one. And then on the right of our note, we want to link this to a custom property in the current document, which is called total sheets. So this is sheet one of six. This information doesn't have to be under file properties. This is just information that is uh, already stored in the background that you can retrieve and reuse. And you can see here sheet one of six. For the last one, our revision. Uh, for our scenario, we want our title block to use uh, the revision custom property that's in our drawing. So, under file properties, here you can see we have a uh, revision. And we're going to add one additional step. We're actually going to add a revision table. In order to add it, we're actually going to have to... Um, actually, before we do that, let's first link our revision placeholder note to our revision custom property that's in our drawing. So we'll pick current document. We'll pick revision, we'll click OK. It's blank right now because right now we don't have anything under the revision custom property. We're going to go ahead and exit uh, edit sheet format. And once we're outside, we're going to add in a revision table. And what this will allow users to do is whenever you add a revision, let's say revision A, that will automatically be filled in for our revision custom property as you can see there, which will in turn automatically fill in the information in our title block. Uh, if I go to edit sheet format, you'll see sometimes you have to go in there for it to update. But once I exit, you can see here that now our revision custom property is filled in. So now all our information is filled in for our title block. Now, since I do have multiple sheets, I'm going to have to repeat this process for each one of these uh, sheets so that it fills in all of that information. Now, since you don't want to have to do this for every drawing document manually, the reason I'm showing you this is because you can save this as a template. Okay, so what you're going to want to do after this is repeat the procedure for each one of the sheets. And once that is done, we're going to go ahead and save this as a template. So an important note when adding or linking custom property to the title block of your other sheets, in this case, we're going to go to our, our second sheet called elevation you need to drag a drawing view of your model into your drawing sheet in order to be able to link the custom properties for that model into your title block. For example, if I go to edit sheet format and then I attempt to link the custom property of description and it's gonna, this custom property is from the model so I'm gonna wanna click model found here you'll see that under property name description does not come up and that's because it does not know where to grab the custom property information from so for each sheet you have to draw drop in a model drawing view and then it will work so let's go ahead and do that so we'll exit our sheet format and we'll go to our view palette and we'll refresh it and we'll drop a front view once that front view is dropped, we'll go to edit sheet format and under description, 
You'll see that now when I go to model found here that you'll actually have access to the description custom property of your model and that will fill in. And then I can repeat this process for all of my other model custom properties. So that's something you want to be aware of. Um, I'll go ahead and repeat this process for all of my other drawing sheets. For time purposes, uh, I'm just going to fast forward to when uh, I've already linked the custom property information to our title block for all, all of our other sheets. So here now we have linked all of our custom properties from our model and our drawings to our title blocks in each one of our sheets. As you can see here, here in our elevation view, all our title block information is filled in. You see the revision table. Uh, as well as there's a drawing view because I needed that in order to link the, the, the model custom properties. Same thing was done for our XYZ bomb sheet, which is our third sheet. You can even see it says three out of six. Here's our fourth sheet, or our fifth sheet, I should say. And then our sixth sheet. Everything is also linked, the revision, description, all that information has been linked as it being pulled from the custom properties of the drawings and the model. Now for our next step, instead of saving this drawing, because obviously we just spent a whole bunch of time linking these properties, uh, in order for me not to have to do this every time for every new assembly, um, I'm going to save this off as a drawing template. And that will allow me to simply create a drawing from an assembly without having to relink or fill in that information from the title block. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is clean up some information. So I'm going to have to delete all the drawing views in each one of my sheets because you not you cannot save a drawing template if you are referencing an external file or model. So we're going to delete these. We are also going to remove our revision. So if I delete the balloon, remove the revision row item from our revision table. We also want to go to our file properties and make sure uh, that there's no information already filled in. So I'll delete the information for the drawn by check by and revision uh, custom property information. Uh, I can leave the labels there just not the actual evaluated inputs. I'll select OK. You can see here the title block is now blank, uh, but just because it's blank, it still contains that link so that when I do create a drawing from a new assembly, it'll bring in that information in. So here you can see all of our drawing sheet title blocks are now blank. In my first sheet, my revision uh, table does not have uh, any revisions in it. And then for the last step before saving it, I am going to have to clear any external references. Okay. Reason being is I'll show you in a moment. If I go to file, save as, I don't want to save this as a SOLIDWORKS drawing. I want to save this as a drawing template so I can reuse it. I'll pick a location. So one of my current template locations is under training templates. I'm going to save over this Micromax C size ANSI inch. So I'm going to save over my old template. And you'll see that as we do, I want to replace my old template, yes, because now I want to use the updated one with the revision table and the length custom property. So I'll click yes. And notice it says template store and predefined empty views. So models, dimensions, and they will be removed from views. The following types of views 
will be removed from the template section due to uncropped. So essentially, you can't have any uh, drawing views in there, which we've already deleted, so okay. And now we've saved over our template. Now, sometimes it won't let you save over the template if you don't clear all first. So if it ever tells you unable to save drawing template because there's reference documents, uh, before you save the drawing template, make sure you hit clear all. In this case, it uh, looks like it did it on its own and it'll let me do it. And that's probably because I didn't have any drawing views. So now that we've saved our drawing template, I'm going to close out of this drawing. So remember, we never saved it. And we're going to test out this template. So we are remember, we have our, our model custom property information already filled in. I'm going to go ahead and make a drawing for my assembly. Once again, I'm going to select that micro max uh, C size template that we just replaced. And when I insert, right now you'll look in the title block, there's no information filled in. But once we drag and drop our first drawing view, you'll see that that information will get filled in. As well as when I fill in my drawing custom property information, that will also get filled in. And finally, right now, my revision information hasn't been filled in, so I can add a revision if a design change occurs. And that information in my, that revision letter will be added to my custom property table, as well as when I go to edit sheet format, that revision letter will also show up in the title block. Now, when I go to my other sheets, only the drawing information gets brought in until I drag and drop a drawing view. So whatever model uh, drawing view I drop in, that's the information that the title block is going to use and bring in into the title block, which you see is now filled in. And I could repeat this for each one of my sheets. Once again, the title, blo title block propagates. And I'll do it one more time. And you can see there that the title block has updated once again. So now that our template is set up, as long as the custom property headers uh, are available in our drawing sheet, as well as our model custom property information is filled in, uh, that custom property information will automatically propagate over to our title block now that we've created this new template. So this has been Alejandro with GSE. Thank you for watching.